looking ahead at World Humanitarian Day, which takes place tomorrow, celebrated tomorrow. And uh, the point we are making throughout this entire broadcast is uh, humanitarianism and World Humanitarian Day means a lot more than uh, just uh, uh, some uh, sort of assistance where you're giving somebody a pair of shoes or you're feeding somebody. Uh, they, is, they are immense. They are huge contributions. And as we have heard earlier on with uh, Welcome Bitboy, uh, an ex-prisoner himself and uh, concerned about uh, his community. We've seen the Rebel Skills Development Center. And we're going across now to look at humanitarian Professor Shahid Hartley, who is the head of Advancing Knowledge, a non-profit company, AKNPC. Professor Shahid, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and similar greetings to your, to your listeners as well. Yes, uh, wonderful that you're able to join us, Prof, on this day, you know, looking ahead at World Humanitarian Day tomorrow. And the point that I have been making is, you know, humanitarianism uh, takes a special kind of person, someone who is caring, someone who is concerned about people, about uh, their future. And we've seen it come out uh, so strongly as we look ahead at this day to recognize achievements of people who are humanitarians in every day of, uh, in, in every sense of the word uh prof uh, just what does this day actually mean for you uh, uh shukran uh brother um the look the humanitarian day deals with uh, with people who has made a difference in communities uh, and work towards uplifting and uh, advancing communities um in various facets in various ways um in terms of the work that i do i I come from a particular background, particular qualifications in terms of in terms of science and mathematics, um, especially science. And um, I look at how we can advance um, our current um, corps of, of science teachers and le and science learners, and to prepare them for what is uh, what generally known as the fourth industrial revolution, where people where the development of science goes beyond um, what we know it as as it is now uh, and so it is it for, for me it is preparing um, our learners and our teachers to prepare the learners for the f future and and what the future holds yes and especially looking at us here in south africa and uh, obviously looking at the type of work that you do as well we are a very unequal society we're a very unequal country and i'm sure that uh, you know looking at the level of support that you provide uh, also aimed at people that uh, come from uh, disadvantaged uh, schools that are on the receiving end of this inequality that we see across uh, the country Absolutely. That, that this is this is the whole basis of of the work that I'm doing. Um, I'm supporting um, economically deprived, disadvantaged, whatever the term that you want to use, um, schools, learners, uh, teachers that teach in the in these in these areas, and we want to see how we can uplift um, and advance the knowledge of of uh, of the learners, so that they can go and and look at these new positions that are opening up with in artificial intelligence robotics coding and all the all these or science physics chemistry astronomy um so that we we we, we strive to get more of our learners from the disadvantaged communities into this into these positions um one of the ways that that we well the approach that we've done we, we've taken is um we've looked in at a needs assessment at 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 communities when before we go into a particular education district i work with broader education districts and before you go into that you do a needs assessment in terms of what are the what are the challenges what are the major challenges in my field now i can't um fix the roof of the of a school or you know or the toilets of a school my field is in science education other people working that in in their particular areas and so one of the things that we've done is to look at how can we on the one side improve the teaching of science and maths and technology in these in these areas for for the future and um we then develop kind of uh, training uh, opportunities training classes accredited courses for teachers 
uh, who then attend these particular training courses. Um, then on the other side, we have, uh, this comes from the research that we've done, um, a lot of the, the, the students tend to shy away from um, the perceived hard subjects like science and mathematics. And so we then looked at how can we, how can we get learners more interested, stimulated in, to do science and mathematics, and to show them, you know, that they, they, are, they are capable of doing the, these particular subjects. And so we do a whole lot of um, projects and activities um, for learners to do to to bring them more into into this into this way. One of the projects that we busy with um, for for learners is um, what is happening next week at the Cape Townian Hotel, where it's called um, Women in Mathematics. And because what we've seen is a lot of girls tend to shy away from 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 pure mathematics, doing pure mathematics, and so for um, a project that we've run since 2007, um, we invite um, uh, four, three or four learners from each, from 25 schools across the Cape Flats, um, from the most disadvantaged schools across the Cape, Fl Cape Flats, and we invite them to the Cape Tonian Hotel, where we um, then hold in a, in a symposium form, in a mini, mini convention form, um, role models that comes from the different communities, very good role models that come from different communities to come uh, to come talk to them. Um, at the first one, we have uh, we have a, a chartered accountant, uh, Fazl and Ori. We have um, people from actuarial science, from pure mathematics, um, um, somebody who studies volcanoes and underwater um, shifting out in, in geology. And um, various, over the years, we've had various uh, female role models, uh, people who studied very particular areas, and they come talk to them and tell them, this is why mathematics impo is important. From where they are, where, from where they started, um, and then moving them up, um, the, these role models will tell them, I, I might not have liked mathematics, but I worked hard at mathematics. It was important for me. And when I did went to study at university, this is where I did mathematics. It might not have done pure mathematics or somatic as a subject, but it came into the subject. And then in their current careers, they talk about um, the role of mathematics in their current career. So this is one of the projects that, that, that we do, we're doing with uh, to get learners more interested in doing science and mathematics. There's another one coming up on the 28th of, uh, of, of September, uh, which will be help, held in the in, in, in Booster area. Um, and that is science science clubs, a uh, science uh, competition that we're holding in, in there. And there we have about 30 uh, science clubs from primary school and high school from across the, the uh, rural uh, belt. Um, learners the science club are represented at that particular competition and they and then they show the kind of science activities that they prepared in the science club and there's an actual competition a really strenuous competition between between them not between the teachers also um but, but the teachers are preparing these learners to show the, the kind of experiments that they're doing the exhib exhibitions that they're doing at the particular science competition so we we've from the research we've done we've got on the one side we have to prepare the teachers and these are the others, which we, which I call building the culture of science teaching. On the other side, we do all kinds of activities for learners, uh, projects, uh, you know, science uh, involvement, uh, competitions, and we what what I call building this culture of science learning. And then we have a third component, which we we're working on very very hard, um, is that. Science happens in a particular space, which is called the science laboratory. Now, you want to teach learners how to do different experiments. At the end of matric, the matric year, matric paper in physical science consists of experiments that these learners are supposed to have been done. And the questions are based on those experiments. And if they, they haven't done it at school, like we, when we, when we were at school, we have never done it. Um, you put them at a disadvantage if you don't give them the space. And none of our disadvantaged schools have been built with 
uh, good you know, uh, uh, laboratories. Uh, uh, so primary schools never, never received any laboratory. High schools have a space and a, a, a venue. It might not be well uh, stocked, but it, they have a space. And so what we've done is we started building science laboratories at schools. Um, and, and we've done this with uh, corporate corporates like Garden Cities, Archway Foundation, the Western Cape Education Department. And in a few um, in a few uh, weeks' time, we will be opening uh, the 104th science laboratory in the Western Cape. I'm sorry, 103rd science laboratory in the Western Cape. Now, remember, each of these laboratories costs around a million, just over a million rand. And so we've, we've, that's the kind of thing that, we, uh, we, that we've contributed. And so uh, from the research, uh, we, we, we're looking at um, how do we, you know, how do we uh, incubate this culture of science teaching, of building the science teacher, of, of advancing the science teacher? How do we incubate the culture of science learning by supporting and, and, and getting the learners more interested in these, in this subject? And how do we incubate that in a, in, in a creative space? And now the creative space are the laboratories that, uh, that, we've, been, uh, that we've been building. Yes. Um, Obviously, Prof, you know, there's still a lot of hard work that lies ahead. And I'm sure absolutely. that yeah, it's a huge task. And uh, But also at the same time, uh, just looking back at the successes, and I'm sure that gives you a great sense of uh, fulfillment uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what uh, you have achieved uh, to date. And uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, with uh, from time to time, hopefully we will be able to engage with you uh, to uh, take this discussion further. And as you celebrate a lot more successes. But for now, Prof, uh, we celebrate people like yourselves on World Humanitarian yeah. Day. We recognize your achievements and the immense, the great contribution that uh, you are making uh, through your organizations, uh, you know, the, the AKNPC, the nonprofit organization. So all the best to you, Prof. And once again, we do appreciate you taking time out and sharing what you have with us this morning right here on Salam Media. All the best to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi.